Your electric bill may have just a few line items, or it may be much more detailed. Formats differ by utility, but overall, electric bills include the same components. 90% of Indiana's electric customers are served by five investor-owned utilities. The two major parts of the bills for these utilities are base rates and trackers. The base rate makes up most of the bill. It covers operating and maintenance costs, including capital improvements, safety costs, and personnel costs. Base rates can only be changed through a rate case before the Indiana Utility Regulatory Commission. A rate case includes a full examination of the utility's financial health and typically takes 10 months to complete. Rate cases are legal proceedings, similar to civil court cases. The Indiana Office of Utility Consumer Counselor represents the interests of all consumers in these cases, while also inviting consumer input. An electric utility's base rate has two subparts, a flat portion and a volumetric portion. The flat portion, known as a customer service charge or facilities charge, does not vary among customers or from month to month. The rest of the base rate is a volumetric charge for each kilowatt hour the consumer uses. Between rate cases, utilities may adjust rates for specific items as allowed by Indiana law. These items, known as trackers or riders, may change every 3, 6, or 12 months. Any changes require OUCC review and IURC approval through cases with shortened time frames. Four of Indiana's five major electric utilities include a rider known as a TDASIC on their bills. This stands for Transmission, Distribution, and Storage System Improvement Charge. It was authorized by the Indiana Legislature in 2013, with the law updated in 2019. The law allows a utility to file a five- to seven-year plan for infrastructure improvements and requires the Commission to act within 210 days of the filing. If the plan is approved, the utility is then allowed to seek rate increases to recover costs for the projects in the plan as they are incurred, as often as every six months. The Commission must issue an order on each of these tracker filings within 120 days. The law gives the OUCC 60 days to review the filing, including verifying data and ensuring that the projects are in line with state law. A utility may update its plan each year and can recover up to 80% of the project costs through the trackers. It must defer 20% of the costs to its next base rate case, and it must initiate that case before the end of the t sick plan's term. Another tracker is the FAC, which stands for Fuel Adjustment Clause. It was created several decades ago, and all five major Indiana electric utilities have it. This tracker allows the utility to recover, dollar for dollar, the cost it pays for the coal or natural gas burned at its generating plants. Base rates include a portion of fuel costs, with the FAC allowing regular adjustments, up or down, to reflect market changes. Depending on the utility, the FAC may also be used to recover costs related to solar and wind farm operations, or for nuclear fuel, along with costs of purchasing power on the wholesale market. These requests are made every three or six months, depending on the utility. OUCC analysts review these filings to ensure the utilities are incurring these costs prudently and not profiting off these pass-throughs. Environmental compliance costs may also flow through trackers. Though Indiana is transitioning to using new sources to generate power, it has traditionally relied heavily on coal. As federal laws and regulations required utilities to install scrubbers and other technologies at coal-fired plants to reduce emissions, state law has allowed the utilities to recover these costs through rates. Regional transmission costs. Each major Indiana electric utility is a member of a regional transmission organization, or an RTO, either the Carmel-based Mid-Continent Independent System Operator or the Pennsylvania-based PJM Interconnection. Each RTO manages power flows over a multi-state region. Think of it like an air traffic controller. The costs for participating in an RTO are recoverable through rates. Each Indiana investor-owned utility recovers its costs through an annual or semi-annual tracker, whether it appears as a billing line item or not. Energy efficiency programs are offered by all five major power utilities. Under a law that received legislative approval in 2014, 
Each utility uses a tracker called a Demand Side Management or DSM tracker to cover the costs of these programs and to recover lost revenues, a term in statute referring to money the utilities would have otherwise made if they had generated and sold the power instead. Certain utilities use additional trackers, but those we've just covered are the ones that are most commonly used and the ones that involve recovery of the largest amounts of costs. A brief word about the state's other electric providers, municipal utilities and rural electric membership cooperatives. State law allows these utilities to withdraw from commission oversight. All REMCs in Indiana have withdrawn, meaning all rate-making decisions are made by each REMC's locally elected board of directors. The majority of municipal electric utilities have withdrawn as well. All of their rate-making decisions are made by locally elected city and town councils. However, eight municipal electric utilities remain under commission oversight for their rates and charges. To change their base rates, they must follow the same rate case process as investor-owned utilities. These utilities, who all purchase wholesale power, also adjust rates regularly through expedited IURC filings to adapt to changes, upward or downward, in those purchase costs.